Welcome back to Flipping Clean Mama. I am so glad to be with you today in, in the new year of 2022. And this is my first flip of the new year. And this flip is near and dear to my heart. I am flipping an antique secretarial that used to belong to my great grandma. To give you a little time reference for that, my great grandma was born around 1865 or 1866. And then later on, she gave it to my grandma who was born in 1913. And I inherited it 23 years ago. And just in the time that I've inherited it, it's been through multiple moves and a lot of damage and wear and tear has occurred during those years that just I had it. So can you imagine all this piece has been through in the last probably 100 plus years? So I wanted to keep some of that character so I didn't fill in a whole lot of nicks and gouges and bumps, only the major ones. But it is amazing how you can take just a little bit of money, invest it into something and make it look new again. And that's what I did with this project. I hope you really enjoy it. I am so thankful to do it and hopefully great grandma, if I can find a picture of her, I'll put it here, would be proud. <laughs> All right, without further ado, let's get flipping. All right, here's the before. And I have had this piece for 23 years now. So it has been through many a moves, just alone with us, let alone the past it had prior. And since I was little, it has been broke. The door has been broken, even when my grandma had it. And it has just got worse over the years. And the bottom cabinet door, the hinges were bent. So there was a few repairs that needed to be done. Here I am um, gluing the door to the desk part and trying to fix that back up again. I'm using tight bond glue and then attaching the piece and of course, my clamp that I tried first was too small. So I had to have my husband go out and get a longer clamp, which isn't on the video. And then after the glue dried, I did take wood filler and I filled it with wood filler. And sanded that down and it worked really good to fix this door. And as always, when you start a piece, you need to wash your piece. And I didn't record the rest of the piece being washed, but I did wash the whole piece with um, Dawn dish soap. Any degreasing agent will work, a TSP or TSP substitute, or a, like a dish soap like Dawn. So wash the whole piece, and then you rinse it off afterwards to get it all all the chemicals off and here's just a shot of the back of the piece and there was some writing on it like a signature there but we couldn't make it out exactly what it said and there was also some writing down below and a number I think 39 on it I was trying to find um, where it was made but it just had the signature, I would guess, of the guy that made it. Now I'm just scuff sanding the whole piece. And 
then after I scuff sanded it, of course, I wipe it down and get all the sand dust off. Right there, I'm taking this little arm off that holds the door. Besides the hinges. And there it is there. And to scuff sand the piece, I was just using a 220 grit sandpaper over a sandy block. And I left most of the imperfections on this piece, but there was a big gouge on the side. So I did fill that and then sand it smooth. But most of the other little nicks or dents I did leave on the piece. I just wanted to leave them for the character. You know, the piece has been in a lot of different situations over the last probably 100 plus years. And... I just wanted to keep that character. Heading back to what used to be home Passing by those little towns I know so well Stopping for gas and then I'm behind the wheel again Driving this like a spiritual cleanse Where every mile is a new beginning And every bend holds a new end And today I am painting with Melange's all-in-one paint So Melange's one paint And it is Fathom Blue by Melange One And Melange One means that it has the primer and the top coat in it So it's an all-in-one step which I love and it dries self levels really good and is also very smooth and I just really enjoy using melange paints in general but I really enjoy their melange one as you can see in the background I have all kinds of helpers dogs kids As I'm in the kitchen now because of the cold winter and it's too cold out in my garage. So you'll see a lot of traffic in the background. <laughs> and that's all I taped of the first coat. So here is the first coat done. I ended up putting three coats on this piece. And now we're just going to sanding. I sanded the doors and the shelves as you see there I'd already sanded that shelf and now I am applying some fresh stain inside just to freshen it up and make it look newer again I use dark walnut by Minwax Back to what used to be home Passing by those little towns I know so well Stopping for gas and then I'm behind the wheel again 
Driving this like a spiritual cleanse Where every mile is a new beginning And every friend holds a new end Eyes on the road, don't lose control I'm speeding fast to chase my soul I'm driving to get away Running through emotions high and low For the sky, I had it all but lost and fell back down again. Spent my time playing the game where every single day was a losing battle and every drink was a dead end. Eyes on the goal, don't lose control. I'm living fast, I've lost my soul. I'm driving to get away. Emotions high and low Holding on or letting go I'm fighting Another day Here I'm just staining the shelves there are three shelves, and still I have all the original hooks or little pieces for the shelves to sit on. I still have the key as well. It is not the original key, but it is a key I got made or from a friend, I should say, about 20 years ago that actually worked for it. The thing I love about stain is that it's so easy and it makes things look so good. <laughs> if you haven't subscribed yet, I hope you'll do so. I would love you to follow me and join my flipping family. And I hope to bring projects to you every two weeks on Sunday. So set your notifications. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram as Flipping Clean Mama, and I would love to see you over there as well and chat with you too. Now I'm just wiping back the stain, and here is the finished product of the shelves. Here I'm just smoothing everything out with the 220 grit again and then wiping it all back before I put on my second coat. Just showing the color here of the paint can, the Fathom Blue, and I'm using my Zebra Round Brush. I got the Zebra Round Brush for Christmas from my husband in my stocking, as well as a 2-inch angled brush. I got a lot of tools for Christmas to use. A little Dremel and some clamps. 
stuff like glue and a uh, tool to remove staples. So all my Christmas gifts are coming in handy for my furniture flipping adventures. The zebra round brush really worked good on this project. It just was so easy to do these little edges and around all the details, especially since it was new and it wasn't all, you know, bristles all frailed out and everything. It really worked great. Let me know what you think of this project in the comments. Have you ever done a secretarial? Peace. And do you like the colors I chose? In a little bit, I did use some gold gilding wax to go around the details. And I wasn't too sure at first that I was going to like it. If that was really my style as I'm keeping this piece. As it is sort of a family heirloom to me. 
Um, so I wasn't sure, but now that I've done it and it's sitting in my living room, I really do like that I did add the gold and I think that it really helped elevate the piece. So let me know what you think of the gold in the comments. I did go over the hinges with the gold as well and the hardware. Here I am putting on the gold gilding wax. Um, I believe it is from Jolie. And then touching up a few places with a little artist brush with the paint as well. I just use my finger to apply the wax. It's just easier that way for me around these details. I used Howard's Feed and Wax to um, wax on top coat the stained parts that I did. I really love Howard's Feed and Wax. It is super easy and smells like oranges and really does a good job putting on that top coat of wax over the paint or the stain. I didn't go over the paint because it already has the top coat in it, but I did do all the wood parts with the Howard's Feed and Wax. So if you haven't tried that, I would give it a try. And no, I'm not sponsored by anybody.
here I am putting in the shelves. Like I said, they had the original hardware and there were three shelves to put in. And then my husband will be attaching the door here in a second. And the hinge to that door um, was really bent, but he went and bent it back in the garage and it went on fine. All right, let's get to some numbers before we get to that final reveal. Obviously, I'm not going to sell this piece. I will be keeping it. But I want you to know what the numbers are in case you do a piece like this and wanted to sell it. So I put about $20 of paint into it as I didn't use quite the whole container of paint. And I put about $5 of stain into it, $5 of the Howard's Feeding Wax, and maybe another 5 for miscellaneous like sandpaper, screws, glue, that kind of thing. So I'm giving me an all-in price of $35, which I think is a great investment to redo a relic such as this. So I encourage you, if you have great grandma's antique piece of furniture or great Aunt Edna's old rocking chair or whatever you have around your house, take that piece and transform it to fit your style now and repurpose it again. Don't let it just sit in your basement like I did with this piece for 23 years. I am so glad I did it and I know you will be too. I also want you to know that my next video will come out January 30th, God willing, and it will be a collaboration between me and my other fellow YouTubers as I participate with them in the Ugly Duckling Challenge hosted by Desert DIY. The Ugly Duckling Challenge will be just what it says. We'll be taking an ugly piece of furniture and making it beautiful again. So I hope you'll join me on January 30th for that challenge. And I want to give a big thank you for all your support you guys have been giving me for all the new subscribers and all the subscribers in the past that have supported my journey this far, thank you so much. And I hope that you will continue. And if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Go subscribe, comment, and like. It really helps my channel out. So thank you again. I know you're waiting. You're waiting for the final reveal. Get on with it, Larissa. Okay. Here it comes, the final reveal. Let me know how you like it. All right. Until next time, keep on flipping.